Oh man, this movie. Uh it's it's polarizing, to say the least. Y'all know what y'all clicked on. This is a movie review uh, that's going to be happening on this channel more often. I, I enjoy doing movie reviews. It's different than what's on the main channel. I kind of want to dabble in something else. And I love movies. I love cinematography. Uh, so when this movie had came out or when I saw the preview for it, I was like, this should be right up the alley because it's a biopic, which I enjoy. And it's from the golden era of Hollywood, which means that if the cinematography is the way that it should be, it should be a pretty visually stunning movie. When I started reading or saw reviews, I was like, damn, why is this so polarizing? 54% on the critic side and then on the on the personal use side, it's got like 32%. I'm like, bro, ain't no way a movie this good or this like this high in in hype especially with a rising quickly rising star and Ana de Armas as the lead as the lead actress or actor why is everybody so why is it so polarizing why is it the way that it is and after I saw it I can understand why but I also understand why people enjoyed the movie and I am probably in that category but I do understand the polarization so Let's go ahead and talk about it. So first off, let's start off with the good things. I have them down on my notes right here on my phone. The good thing is that the cinematography uh, did live up to what I hoped it did. There were a couple of things in the cinematography that I disagreed with that I thought were like, you shouldn't have done that overly ambitious or kind of like cheesed up the whole movie slightly uh one of those things being the switch constantly from black and white to regular to black and white and, and color I, and there might have been a reason why certain scenes were black and white but i couldn't for the life of me grasp it but i'm sure there was a reason outside of just being like oh this is gonna look cool this is gonna look super cinematic when things are in black and white i, I hope that there is like a storytelling reason why the black and white was in there but on first watch i didn't i didn't catch it uh and then the other thing that kind of made it like cheapened the cinematography a little bit was the different changing aspect ratios i get it i know over time especially in the golden era of hollywood like tv sets were four by three and then i think we went to something slightly larger than that and then we went to 16 by nine and then there were moments when it was like almost vertical format like TikTok. i can understand the switching of the uh the switching of the framing i get it but i can see why people would say that that is not something that was aesthetically pleasing but overall the color grading the cinematography the lighting choices camera movement the characters being framed you get like this very overwhelming feeling from the cinematography uh i thought the cinematography was gorgeous on top of that for the cinematography there were moments in the movie that seemed very very surreal and seemed actually to the point where you would consider them jarring two movies came off the top of my head when i saw the surreal there's there's a scene where she's walking the red carpet and like paparazzi and press are like yelling at her and trying to get her attention and their mouths are huge and they look kind of disfigured because their mouths are so big it puts you in like this uncanny valley kind of like attack on titan type vibe if you watch anime there were moments in there that reminded me of the movie requiem for a dream with jared leto and then it also reminded me of across the universe with it with it's also very like heavenly but surreal and kind of i feel slightly uncomfortable i have this slight inclination to be like oh something's not right here that is very much so some of the moments in the cinematography in blonde i can see people going into a marilyn monroe biopic and then seeing those and being off put by it but i think that it played a key role in understanding her mentality and just just the way that everybody was about her and their fascination with her but they really didn't care about her obviously next thing we got to talk about is anna de armas who is if you know anything about me she is one of my favorite actresses actors uh i have a huge crush on her ever since blade runner ever since knives out she's gorgeous bro she is gorgeous and her performance in this movie is oscar worthy i wouldn't be surprised if she gets oscar nods if not best leading female actor at the golden globes at the uh the golden globes the oscars she does a hell of a job encapsulating Marin marilyn monroe um i think that they did a good job making her look like her as well and they also did an amazing job with making her sound like her it's extremely important bullet point whenever you're trying to be marilyn monroe is getting her very airy high-pitched sound down especially considering that Ana de Armas doesn't speak great English most people would say she did an amazing job she was gorgeous in the film I think she did a good job encapsulating the just the overall sex appeal it's just a, just a stunning performance I, I might be biased because I like her as an actor but 
I think it was great. Now onto the things that might be polarizing about the movie. And I do have, and I, and I can see both sides. Some things I am on the side that is like, that was tacky as fuck and probably shouldn't have been in this movie. And then I'm on the side where I'm like, oh, well that is almost a requirement of a Marilyn Monroe biopic, even if it's not necessarily the way that it actually went down. The first one being, and this is spoiler alerts. Also, this is warning alerts because we do touch on very sensitive topics in the movie, which I did not appreciate about the movie is the fact that they didn't put a warning. There is abortions in the movie um, or scenes of abortion. There's scenes of suicide, drug use. And one of the first scenes in the movie, at least when she's an adult, is her being raped and i did not appreciate the fact that they did not put a warning on the movie because those are very triggering very triggering topics to be touching on without a warning it's almost like an epileptic scene in a movie didn't have a warning label at the beginning being like hey you might you might have an attack right now also because it's a biopic i kind of wish that they said that some of these things were not completely factual to her life some of them were completely made up and i feel like some of them were made up for the sake of the story which i will touch on but i didn't appreciate the fact that for those that don't know Marilyn Monroe, they might think that these things actually went down like this. And without saying like loosely based on true events or based on true events, it kind of leads people to be like, oh, this is fully, this is fully what happened. So it's a little misleading in that sense. So the first one, like I said, the movie starts off with her as a little child and, and her mom, who is clearly mentally unstable, trying to kill her. She tried to drown her. And if I'm not mistaken, Marilyn did go on record and say that her mom was unstable and even tried a, uh, an attempt on her life multiple times. Uh, so that was important into building the unstable universe that Marilyn found herself in from the very beginning, like age of like eight or however old she was. Uh, she wasn't an orphan necessarily, but she was an orphan from the beginning because her mom was unfit and the dad was out of the picture completely. But like I said, the first scene of her as an adult after going to acting and trying to like land roles, the first scene is her meeting with a head of a uh, not record label, the head of like a production house like Fox or like WB. And she goes into the office and doesn't say a single thing. He goes, turns around, turns her around, rapes her. She gets the role, obviously, but she walks out of there crying and passes the secretary who's looking like looking down on her a little bit for for fucking her way to the top, quote unquote. But I get why it's in the movie. But there is no there's no interview. There's no nothing where anybody talked about her have ever been sexually assaulted or raped in the industry. But I do know that it was a very common thing, especially back in that day. Hell, it was as common as of 2020 with Harvey Weinstein and it being covered up much less back then when women were seen as second class citizens, you know it had to have happened, but it might have been important to the overall context of the movie. Like, hey, this was the power dynamic in the 50s between actresses and men in power in the industry. But I do see how it is polarizing because it's why did you have Marilyn Monroe getting raped? You know, there is there is zero there is zero interviews of her ever talking about her or it ever happening. Um, so again, without without a warning at the beginning of the movie, it seems very disingenuous and for shock value that they did that. Her being raped in a biopic is extremely seems sloppy to me. You know, there could have been another way to bring up the fact that that was the environment that she found herself in versus second scene of the movie, first scene in this, as an adult, first first scene with Ana de Armas in it and she's getting raped, sexually assaulted, you know? The next thing that from what I could tell and from what other reviews that I had read in terms of like, obviously Marilyn Monroe was trending at the time that the movie was released and as I was watching it, from everything that I could tell, the love triangle that shows her in the movie with Charlie Chapman's son and somebody else, the love triangle that was her first love, quote unquote, I guess you could say, there is zero evidence that that even existed. Like that was completely fabricated for the sake of the story of the movie and I can tell why it was was fabricated because there are moments like that is the first love that we see her in and the suicide scene obviously it's not really a spoiler y'all know how she died the love triangle came into play again during that scene and then it also came into play again during the scene where she had nude pictures that were potentially being leaked so i see how they could have put it in the movie to push like foreshadowing not necessarily foreshadowing but resolving the entire arc of the movie with the love triangle that eventually played a part in her suicide at the end of the movie. I get it, but again, it never necessarily happened. And without saying that this was actually true events or without saying this biopic has some fictionalized moments in it for the sake of story or based on true events, it just seems very disingenuous. If I wasn't the type of person to Google something after watching or during watching a movie, I would have had to take that for what it was. And I would have assumed that it was correct that she was in a love triangle when really 
it's just baseless completely another extremely polarizing topic that gets brought up in the movie is uh abortion if you don't know at this time again women second class citizens again they should feel lucky that they're in the industry and not at all again power dynamic between execs producers and actresses extremely leaning in one direction versus the other so um forced abortions or pressure to have an abortion at that time was extremely high it's well documented that that it did happen frequently during the golden age of of hollywood there was no protection for women to say hey you can't have a baby she did have miscarriages uh this is well documented this is part of the reason why her and her last husband split up was because they were just having such a hard time having a child uh but there are two scenes in the movie that have people like planned parenthood and outrage the first scene is the forced the first abortion scene they basically show her being forced to have the abortion and then she like runs out of there and that scene alone wouldn't necessarily have, have rubbed me the wrong way it might have still rubbed people the wrong way but i get it again it's kind of like the rape scene where it's like we don't have any evidence or documentation or an interview or anything i say that she actually had an abortion so if we are just using marilyn monroe to paint the picture and the environment where forced abortions were on the table then i get it but also using marilyn monroe for that and saying that she had one could be seen as very sloppy and disingenuous but that's not even the main problem the main problem and par planned parenthood has been they have been upset they have been livid they've made their stance known that the movie is pushing anti-abortion propaganda quote unquote and whether you see that or not that's how you take it but i can see the side of planned parenthood's feeling like that because when she got pregnant with her third husband she's looking at the baby and all of a sudden the like her belly and the baby starts talking to her through the womb and was basically saying like you're not gonna abort me this time like you did the first time right mom like basically guilt tripping her and you can feel the guilt trip and it just seems so it seems so random like why is this why are we talking to a fetus right now and the scene itself just screams it screams that if like that that you should feel some kind of guilt trip or that or that Marilyn Monroe felt some kind of guilt trip so I could see how Planned Parenthood might say that it's you know anti-abortion propaganda by making the viewer feel like there's some kind of guilt around it which there might be there might not be but that's not it's not a blanket feeling across the board you know what I'm saying so again using Marilyn Monroe when there's no documentation or evidence of any kind of abortion she never spoke on it it might have happened but also just randomly throwing in a fetus talking to the mom and the feeling of extreme guilt in that scene just seems super random and it's definitely like why the fuck is this even in the movie so I could see again how Planned Parenthood is up in arms about it like that but then lastly there was a uh, somebody that's famous i guess i saw it i saw it when i was googling like this person was saying that it was fetishizing female female pain i guess you could say and i get where she's coming from when she says that fetish fetishizing the pain because the movie it's fetishizing her as a sexual object at, at times and it's also obviously most of the movie is about her pain versus her versus her creating a whole new shift in power dynamic for female actors which Marilyn Monroe had a huge hand in and it's one of her it's one of her biggest feats of her life but it's not actually talked about a whole lot in the movie so I can see that but also if this is a movie about Marilyn's point of view in the industry it's almost like the female pain had to have been there it has to be there because it's a tragic story it has to be there because these were the this was the atmosphere that was the movie industry in the 50s and 60s so i don't know if it's necessarily fetishizing or if it's like it's like a mobster movie saying that you're fetishizing mobsters during the great during the during the prohibition when that's just factually what happened monsters rose to the heights of society during that time so i get it i do see from a woman's standpoint how they could be like fuck another movie where women are victimized and people are enjoying it i could definitely see that but also just from the historical standpoint that's the way shit went down back then and it needed to be told especially if the movie is about the demise which i could see a whole argument about why are we not making a movie about the good that she did that's a whole separate argument but if the movie is about the demise of marilyn monroe then everything that's in the movie needed to be there outside of the abortion 
seen um, outside of just a couple of different things that are in the movie. But overall, the movie just, it makes me feel bad, yo. I'm not the type of person that goes around obsessing over, over, uh, over actors and actresses and celebrities, but it does make me feel bad that these people are treated inhumanely because they are at the top heavy where heavy is the head that wears the crown type shit like they have the fame and the glitz and the glam but they are seen as objects they are not seen as people the paparazzi doesn't give a shit about them we only care about them when they're hot and we only care about their demise generally speaking and the movie just does a, a very good job at making you realize that it does a good job making you realize that hyper at a hyper level about marilyn monroe and her life and how people treated her and the way she was seen but overall as a movie outside of the context of marilyn monroe it just makes you if you're someone that's aware of the bigger of the bigger picture it's also a movie that makes you realize like damn we really do be treating these people like they're nothing we care about them in their we care about them in their moments but when their moment's gone we ditch them to the side for the next we don't care about how they feel we don't care about the personal shit that they're going through and if it is personal shit that they're going through we only care whenever it's sloppy and in front of our face like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. No one should have gave a fuck about that trial, but they did because it was sloppy and in everybody's face. Again, I'm not that type of person that cares at that level, but I do know that that is the reality for a lot of stars. And that's why a lot of them are cold. That's why you don't want to meet a lot of your favorite celebs because that type of shit will run you into the ground, yo. And I feel like they did a really good job in this movie making you feel like that. So again, like I said, I can see the polarizing nature of the movie. I can see why people hated it. I can see why people are saying that it's very, it's very not letting her soul rest. It's very, it's very exploitative of her. I can see that, but I can also see the side that are like, this is the way this, it's a cruel place. The entertainment industry, especially to women, especially in that time, everything that seemed surreal, everything that seemed jarring, everything that seemed that was like a little uncomfortable to watch. That was the life that they lived. And that was, that was her life. That is why eventually she took her life, you know? So overall, I wish that they put warnings about the very sensitive, hyper-triggering uh, topics in the movie. It's got an NC-17 rating, which I don't think will play a factor into how well it does as a movie because it is on Netflix versus like NC-17 in theater is not going to get any love. It's not mid, but it it's not going to have as high of a rating as something of this caliber should have. Uh, this should this should be an eight eight and a half minimum but this is more of like a six six and a half um it is a little stupid long movie almost three hours and just some of the some of the odd choices that were made in the movie for sure but hope y'all guys enjoyed this video i don't know if you made it this far if you did i appreciate it if you haven't seen the movie do go see it it is something that i think that is worthy of watching speci specifically for honest performance and the cinematography uh just be aware of the different things that I talked about that might be polarizing and come up with your own your own opinion on whether or not they're polarizing or if it's like okay I see what Ernest was saying um I appreciate y'all again I plan on doing more movie reviews uh we just reviewed uh Pearl which I will link at the end of this video and I will catch y'all guys on the next movie review or whatever we do on this channel this is kind of just like a free-for-all type channel so I hope y'all guys enjoy the content over here but I'll catch y'all guys on the next video later